All right, here we go. Integration by partial fractions. Um, here is the uh, overall type of equation we will be dealing with. Um, to start, um, what we have is a constant divided by a quadratic. And you'll remember from the other videos, we always had a constant divided by linears. And that's what makes this change. And we just got to be very careful with our algebra. Okay, so the first thing what we need to do is uh, factor the denominator. So step one, we're going to factor the denominator. And so when we do that, what we are looking for, just a quick reminder, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 8 and add to 6. And those numbers are 4 and 2. And because it's all a plus, we're looking for x plus 4 x plus 2. We can double check by foiling. Um, we would get x times x is x squared. Good. x times 2 is x uh, is 2x. x times 4 is 4x. 4x plus 2x is 6x. 4 times 2 is 8. We've got it. If you need a review on that, I'll provide a link um, to just some basic factoring of uh, quadratics. All right, so we have factored it. And again, this still doesn't look like, uh, um, what's it called, like what we did in the other videos because it's still a quadratic. So what we need to do is actually rewrite this. We need to rewrite this in such a way that it really is going to be equivalent to two different fractions. It is going to be equivalent to, I'm going to, I'm going to do this in a different color. Um, a divided by one of these fractions, one of these denominators. And then we're going to do plus, pardon me, pardon me, B divided by the other one. So this is actually where this gets interesting. This is this is the algebra. This is probably going to be the most challenging part of, uh, of this type of integration for you. What we need to do is rewrite this into this. So for now, let's get rid of, let's ignore the fact that we need to integrate this and just say that this fraction needs to equal those two fractions. Um, so it is doing addition backwards. Remember, when if you take two fractions, so this is a little refresher. If we had to add 2 over 3 plus uh, 5 over 7, well, you would have to multiply this one by 7 over 7 and this one by 3 over 3. And then we would, we would get, or we could turn this into 14 over 7 times 3 is 21 plus 3 times 5 is 15. So, which is, which, um, and let me rewrite this. It's 21, but it's also 7 times 3. So I've got my 7 times 3, and I've got my constant of 29, and now we've broken it up to the two different parts. So it's just working this idea, which you did years ago, um, backwards. So, a little bit more tricky, but we can do this. So what we need to do is realize that if we wanted to put this together to look like this, we would need a common denominator for all of this. So bear with me. Let me put away a couple of these markers because I'm getting myself all confused and befuddled. Um, so I need to multiply this by x plus 2 over x plus 2. And I'm going to have to multiply this one by x plus 4 over x plus 4. Right? That's more or less what I did here. And so I'm going to get a times x plus 2 plus b times x plus 4 over x plus 4 x plus 2. That's the right side. And notice the left side is still this. So this, this divided by this equals this divided by this. And because the denominators are exactly the same, 
Well, we could just cancel them out. So now we have 4 equals this. All right, well, let's write down the 4, and let's distribute the a's and the b's. So it's going to be 4ax plus 2a plus bx plus 4b. A times x is ax, 2a, bx, 4b. There's no x terms over here. Therefore, we know that we're going we're gonna to write this in two equations. We can say that ax plus bx equals, and this is where we just got to be careful. We could say that there's a 0x here, couldn't we? So it has to equal 0x. At the same time, 2a plus 4b equals 4. Hey, okay. This is good. This is good. So now what we have are two linear equations, which we call simultaneous equations, which is actually something that I am teaching to Algebra 1, literally right now, how to solve something like this. So let's simplify this equation a little bit. There's an x in every single term, so we could divide everything by x. So now we have a plus b equals 0, and we have this. If we wanted to, we, this one we could divide everything by 2. So we have a plus 2b is 2. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm going to draw a little ziggy-zaggy zig here. And I'm going to continue my math over here. Um, actually, I'm going to do something else first. I'm going to solve this equation for A. I could solve this one for B. I, it doesn't matter which I do, but what I'm going to do is uh, a loop, uh, substitution. So I am going to say that A is the opposite of B. All right? And if A is the opposite of B, that means I can take this negative B and substitute it in there for A. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to do that over here. We have A is the opposite of B, and then we have this equation. So that means the opposite of B, right there, plus 2B equals 2. Well, these are like terms, so therefore I can say opposite of b plus 2b, that's just a regular b, equals 2. Hey, I figured out that b is 2. This is good. And then over here, I can plug back in and I go, well, a is the same as negative b. Well, therefore, negative b, or negative 2, is a. So I have my... A's and B's. So that means I can say that the integral that I was trying to do is really negative 2 on that one and positive 2 on that one. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite that here and then I'm going to erase this and then I'm going to actually do the integration. So first of all, I'm going to rewrite this and say negative 2 over x plus 4 plus 2 over x plus 2 dx. This is the integration that we are trying to solve because this is the same as this. Okay, I'm going to let that sink in. This is the same as this. That was all the work that we did. I'm going to get the lights back on because that's how this rolls. And now I'm going to erase this and rewrite that over here just so we can see it. You don't need that anymore either. So this is, after all that algebra, this is the same as negative 2 over x plus 4 plus 2 over x plus 2 dx. So we actually haven't done any calculus yet. All we did was refactor this, solve for a and b, and then rewrite it there. 
Now it's time for the calculus. This is actually the easy part. What we should realize first is that this is just two separate integrals. I can do it that way because they're being added. I can separate them out. Um, I need to integrate the denominator. I could use u substitution and could go through that whole process, but it's actually, this is pretty simple, so I'm going to just do it directly. Negative 2 is my constant times bln of x plus 4, absolute value. And then I put a plus c here normally, but because I'm going to do it again, I'm only going to do plus c once. Um, so it's plus 2 ln, the absolute value of x plus 2, that's this one, plus c. And this one was so easy because if I were to do u substitution, I would find out that du is just 1 dx, so life is pretty good. So anyway, this is my answer to the integral of that. Thank you very much. I will do uh, one or two more examples in following videos. Bye.